Hey guys, welcome to Tasman Travels. In this video, we're showing you our 12 volt DC conversion for Starlink. We'll take you from unboxing, wiring and installation and review after several months of use. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, we're Tom and Jordan and we travel full time off grid around New Zealand in our trusty Sprinter Matilda. Hey everyone, so you would have seen no doubt that we finally got Starlink, we've been talking about it for ages, even though there are only really a few places in New Zealand that you really can't get any signal nowadays. For editing, for any work we do, for peace of mind we decided no let's go ahead, let's get Starlink, let's see what it's all about. What I thought I'd do before Tommy shows you how he's going to set it up to our van, because there's lots and lots of different ways you can do it, um, I thought I'd just let you know what's in the box. So it comes in this quite huge box to show you in the van. Now full disclosure, this is our second box. The first Starlink we got, we opened it up and there was like a hole in the, the, the dish. So it's like, mm, nah, so we took that back. So we got this and the first one from No Leaming. It was on offer, so I think that this hardware was just under like 300 bucks. And we got a discount with our NZMCA membership. I can't remember what it was completely, I'll put it down below. So, what you get then. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> first thing is some very, very basic instructions on what to do. A cover. <laughs> so here you go. The first thing then you see is the base. So this is some hardcore, tough metal. This is really, really solid, real good, sturdy stuff. It's got some holes on each leg if you wanted to maybe screw it in or anchor it down. Then you get the actual Starlink. It's quite beautiful looking. Like you want to try and compare it to a Mac. You know when you open a Mac or an iPhone, but it's not like that. But um, again, very, very, very heavy. So this is the actual Starlink. This is what it's going to get the signal to Musk's satellite. And then the arm here, this goes into the base and then the satellite will move when it gets a signal. Attached to that is like a 15 meter cable. <laughs> so this is <laughs> really long, but I suppose that's good. Then you get, oh, this is nice, so a router. Now, um, we're not going to use this because Tom's setting it up to the van. Um, now, as you've seen in my videos, I don't understand all that stuff, but um, Tom will tell you what he's doing. Yeah, so we'll keep it, I'm sure, in case, but we won't be using it. And then you get your about 1.5 meter AC cable, which is obviously for this. Again, we're not going to use that regulatory notices in lots of different languages. I'm not going to read that. We're going to keep the box and um, we're going to store it in here when we're not using it because it's got all its padding, it's how it came, the space for everything and it fits really well in the garage. Yeah, that's, that's it. So let's give it a go. Hey guys, so just so you know a little bit about why we chose a 12 volt conversion, we have a fully off-grid setup without the need for an inverter. Our laptops and our devices all run off 12 volts and that's how we like it. And we don't want to drain our batteries any more than they need to be. We've got just over 300 amp hours of batteries and over 500 watts of solar on the roof. And that's more than sufficient for us. But if we were to put an inverter into the mix, especially with running Starlink all day, we just may not have enough power. So let's go in and have a look. Hey, so I'm just gonna show you guys what I've bought to make the Starlink work with 12 volts. Done a lot of research and apparently this is one of the best ways to do it. So I've had to buy quite a few separate different things, mostly off Amazon, fairly cheap. So I'll just run through what we've got. This was probably the most expensive thing. It's a 12 volt to 48 volt DC to DC converter. A wire from our batteries will go directly into this and it will convert the 12 volts up to 48 volts which is what is needed for the Starlink dishy to work. I think it's around 160 New Zealand dollars. 
This is a really good brand, Meanwell. I could have gone for a much cheaper DC-DC converter, but I saw quite a few mixed reviews with the cheaper ones. So I decided to get a, a decent branded one that is gonna last and be stable. So the next bit of kit is this Yao Sheng PoE injector. The cables from the converter will go into the PoE injector. And this basically allows the Starlink to be powered through an ethernet cable. We've also got a same branded Yao Sheng Dishi adapter. Because Starlink used their own cables, I didn't want to have to cut the cable like a lot of people do. And this is only a very cheap $30 adapter. The Starlink can plug directly into this. We've also got a GL iNet router. Can't use the Starlink router that it comes with because that's powered off of 240 volts. So this is just a, a USB router that we're gonna use. So I'll just show you how it's all gonna work. So cables from the battery will go into the converter. Wires from the converter will go into the PoE injector. The adapter will plug into the PoE. So these two work together. Just need an ethernet cable to go in to the LAN and this will go into the router. And then to plug the Wi-Fi router in, I've just bought a DC to DC converter. So this converts the 12 volts down to five volts, which is needed for the router to work. So this will just plug in there and then this will go um, into the batteries. I'm gonna mount all of this so it's nice and sturdy. All we have to do is plug the Starlink into here and see how we go. So just under the seat, we've got the batteries. There's not a lot of space to play with. So what I'm thinking I might do is mount everything to the top of the seat because there's quite a lot of room above all the batteries. So just to give you an idea on price, this whole kit cost 500 New Zealand dollars, which is about 250 English pounds. And I mean, there's not gonna be too much technical stuff that I need to do apart from counting some wires. I am gonna put some fuses in as well before the equipment just to be safe. <laughs> wiring done and I've changed my idea on where I want everything so instead of having it here I'm gonna have the router here and I'm gonna have these bits sort of back here and then you can see at the back here I'll have the converter there there's enough space to mount everything there from the batteries it will come through a fuse, I've got 15 amp in here, I might change it to 10. It goes from a fuse and it goes then onto a switch so we can turn the whole thing on and off if we need to. And then it goes straight into the DC converter and then out through to the PoE switch. And then the PoE switch goes to the adapter, which then so this is the satellite Starlink dish. So this plugs straight in to here. On a separate power line, we've got our router. This just goes again from the battery to an inline three amp or five amp fuse, little converter. And then all that's left to do is hook the router up put the LAN cable in and then this just goes into the LAN of here and then that's it that's the whole 12 volt conversion so I've just got to mount it now so I've 
mounted everything. Oh, this is just gonna go down there. The other stuff is mounted. And I've put that there. And this is the cable for the dishy. And that's just gonna, every time we wanna use it, we'll just have to put it through here and then plug it into here. So it's finally up and working. I plugged it in and it wasn't working and I was, I was like, oh, what is it? And it took me ages going through each thing, trying to figure out what it was that was making it not work. It just wasn't powering on. And in the end, it was just something silly. I'll show you. All it was is where the Starlink dish is actually plugged in here to the adapter. It just wasn't pushed in enough. So it actually has to click and be flush with the top here. Um, so I went through all of the wires and everything. And I was racking my brain, but now it's working perfectly. Really fast speeds and yeah, really happy with it. So we're all connected online. Just do a speed test. Really happy. Super quick. Hey guys, so we decided not to release the Starlink episode straight away, which gave us the opportunity to test out Starlink for a couple of months. And what do we think? We love it. We need to stay connected for work, for blogging, for various things. And we don't have to worry about which campsite we want to go to. We can go literally anywhere and always be connected. We've had no issues with any downtime or any slow speeds. It's always reliable, always quick. The phone signal in New Zealand isn't too bad. So if you don't work from your van or if you don't need to be connected, it might not be worth it because it is expensive. It's $200 a month. But if you are like us and you spend weeks away in remote places, but you still want to be connected, it's 100% worth it. The only thing that you do have to watch out on is it does draw quite a bit of power from your battery. So you do need to turn it off when you go to bed and just keep an eye on the power consumption. I would say maybe it's roughly around five amps average that it draws, but it's a lot less than it would be with running a inverter. And the great thing about their mobile package is that you can put it on pause if you're not gonna be using it on a month by month basis, which gives you great flexibility as you're not locked into any contracts. And the way we've ended up wiring it, you just flick two switches, one for the router and then one for the Starlink, plug it in and that's it. And as you saw, we did this all ourselves with quite a bit of research. So if you've got any questions, just reach out and we'll be happy to help. If you wanna see what we're up to when we're not doing odd jobs around the van, click that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching.